One of the most brutal periods of history was the French Revolution and subsequent terror that emerged after this. The execution of the king and queen was a huge moment in history and it shocked Europe how a population could turn upon their monarch so severely. But men such as Robespierre emerged in the aftermath of the abolition of the monarchy and they would state that terror must rule to keep everyone against the idea of restoring a king and queen. Because of this, around 17,000 people were executed on guillotines around France, with many men and women who were suspected of harbouring anti-revolutionary ideas being taken to the guillotine for their deaths. Even the wives of the men who were placed under the guillotine blade were forced to witness their husband's death, but if they uttered, uttered a cry, or a tear fell from their face, this was interpreted as anti-revolution sentiment, and they could be dragged under the blade next. But there were 16 members of the Carmel of Compiègne who would be slaughtered during the Reign of Terror, and this included 11 nuns and 3 lay sisters. It was barbaric. Join us today as we look at the executions of the nuns of the Terror. During the French Revolution, there were many Christian people who were persecuted and were executed in the early years of the upheaval in France. Many Christians were sent to the guillotine, but there were many other executions carried out all across the land, and some were shot, battered by violent mobs, and some were even drowned in mass executions. Many others were forced to move away from their homes, and they were deported from certain areas. But in 1790, the revolutionary government passed a law known as the Civil Constitution of the Clergy, and this banned certain religious lifestyles. A community of Carmelite sisters or nuns based in Compiègne had been living peacefully since 1641, well over a century before the revolution. It was a very well thought of French religious community who did their bit to help people, and the community grew, and it was known for its strict religious devotion. These were nuns and women who had lived their lives peacefully for some time, and they were supported by the French court and the monarchy since their beginning. But during the revolution, which was hostile to religion and the Catholic Church, things would change. Following Bastille Day, on the 4th of August 1790, government officials and armed guards burst into the convent in Compiègne, and they forced them to either break their vow or take further punishment. All of the sisters refused to break their vows and abandon their lives of chastity, poverty and obedience. These women were permitted to stay inside of the convent and they were given government pensions and it looked like they would be allowed to stay. But the revolutionary government then forced all clergy to swear an oath for the revolution or risk losing their pensions and becoming very poor. But the government in 1792 plundered churches and interrupted the services which were going on, and the sisters at Compiègne celebrated a final Easter together. But then the prioress, Mother Teresa of St Augustine, stated that the women should sacrifice themselves for France and for their church, and that they should become martyrs for their case. The prioress, who suggested this, almost escaped execution, sacrificing her women when she went back to Paris to look after her mother, who was not well, but she returned four days before the execution. But all of the sisters were arrested. In August of 1792, the government ordered the closure of all women's convents, and their possessions were stolen, and the sisters were forced to leave the convent and their way of life. But Mother Teresa made arrangements for them to try and hide inside of apartments and to wear civilian clothing, as wearing religious clothing had been banned. The women were helped by others close to them. However, in 1794, the terror emerged. This was a period of time in which terror was the order of the day, and executions occurred to strike fear into the hearts of the French people. The government searched the apartments of the sisters and allegedly found letters in which they wrote of their complaints against the revolution, and it was said they had continued to practice as nuns in secret. The sisters were rounded up, and they were then sent to the conciergerie prison in Paris to await their trial. The women had no legal counsel and support to defend themselves. Mother Teresa tried to take full responsibility for the actions of the women to save them, and she was charged with being a counter-revolutionary and religious fanatic. 
but all 16 of the sisters were sentenced to death. Whilst they were being prepared for their executions, one of the nuns managed to obtain a cup of chocolate for the sisters to drink to give them strength, as they had been starved. But in one horrific month, from their arrest to their execution, they were executed. On the evening of the 17th of July, 1794, the sisters were taken through the streets of Paris in an open cart. The journey to the guillotine took two hours, and the women sang hymns and they chanted evening prayers. People who had flocked to see what was happening shouted insults at the brave women and they threw things, but one woman offered the woman water when they were waiting for their execution. But a sister, Mary Henrietta, refused this, and they said they would drink in heaven. A large crowd had gathered at the Place de la Nation, the site of many executions, and people had gathered to watch. They noticed that the women were incredibly brave, and they forgave their guards. The crowd went quiet, and each sister approached Mother Teresa, and kissed the statue of the Virgin Mary she held in her hands. She watched each of the sisters walk up the steps of the guillotine, then be strapped onto the wooden board before the executioner, then quickly slid them under the blade, and the blade was then released. One by one, the women died. The older sister, Charlotte, was 78 when she was helped up to the guillotine with a crutch, and she struggled to get out of the cart, but the sisters could not help her. A guard helped her, and actually threw her onto the street, and this elderly nun had been knocked unconscious but then she stirred and her face was smeared with blood. She thanked the guard for not killing her before she went to the guillotine herself. Sister Mary Henrietta stood next to the prioress and helped the 14 other women climb the scaffold steps before she went up them herself. And Mother Teresa, the prioress, died last. There were no relics of the nuns and the martyrs of Compiègne as they were known. That day, 128 victims had been executed on the guillotine and they were dumped in a 30 feet sand pit in the Picpus Cemetery. The heads and torsos of another 1,300 people were buried here after they went to the guillotine. Ten days after the nuns were executed, the architect of the terror himself, Robespierre, was executed, which brought an end to the reign of terror. The executions of the nuns of Compiègne was a shocking and horrific crime in which 16 women went to their deaths on the guillotine. These women were beatified in 1906 and they are known as martyrs and they are calls for them to become saints in the future. They were women who refused to conform to the revolutionaries and they had suffered persecution under them. But like so many people in France at the time, they would go to their execution on the slanted blade of death that became known as the nation's razor. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.